Hello everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and today I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know about the 2022 Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. If you're looking to buy one of these cars, this video is gonna show you pretty much what every button and every switch on the inside looks like. We also have a full review where I drive the Tucson, so if you're looking for that, be sure to stay tuned on our channel. But in this video, I'm going to open up the Tucson, show you everything that I think you need to know about it before you purchase. So we're gonna start off with a tour of the exterior, which is what I think is probably the biggest selling point here on the Tucson. This is a very interestingly styled vehicle. We've got the limited trim level, which is the most expensive one you can get. So we have this sort of shadow chrome grill right here with the chromed out uh, or black chromed out Hyundai grill, which I think looks really sleek. Leads into these LED DRL lights. Very cool looking. You also see this fascia up here on the Santa Cruz pickup truck. And the main headlights are actually down here. They're split from the DRLs. Very cool looking front end. Much more interesting looking than the previous generation Tucson. Moving over to the side, we've got some plastic around the wheel arch right here, although it is hidden quite well with this dark blue paint. 19 inch wheels, again, a very sporty design. You can tell that Hyundai really went wild with the styling here. You can see these sort of creases here on the door. I've really never seen anything else like that, especially not at this price level. We've also got this cool silver accent here on the roof. That's another very interesting styling element leading into these sort of fang light tail lights. I think those look very nice and I love the connected tail light bar as well. Looks very nice when it's all lit up at night. You might notice there's a Hyundai logo here, uh, no windshield wiper, it's actually hidden underneath this sort of spoiler. That's kind of expensive to do that. Um, so it's really nice that Hyundai did that here. And you'll note that we have this really cool sort of diffuser area with all of these contours in it. Just really shows you how much design went into such a humble crossover that really isn't that expensive. This uh, limited trim level with the hybrid drivetrain is only $37,500, which is less than what you'd pay for a fully loaded Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Now, while we're back here, I may as well show you the trunk, which you can open up using the key fob, but I'm just gonna show you opening up with the button. You also have a way to close that with power here on the tailgate itself. The trunk space itself is massive. I think you get like 41 cubic feet of space and it's like 80 cubic feet when you fold it down. It's almost mid-sized territory in terms of how much space is back here. You can see this is my arm and it just really, I have to stretch out to even come close to touching the back seat. Here in the trunk, we've got a 12 volt outlet so you can power uh, some stuff off of that. We also have a load floor that you can sort of collapse. I'm gonna go full wide on this right here so that I can give you a better glimpse. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the floor up. You can see there's a little bit of underfloor storage here. We have like our tire mobility kit. We have our front license plate. What I can do is I can actually lift this out and then I can slide it down. And now you can see it's a little bit deeper. It's not going to be as flush with the back seat when you do that, but it is nice to be able to open up some extra space with that collapsible floor. I really like that. We have uh, these pulleys right here that we can use to lower the second row seat. As you can see, it goes down most of the way, but you are gonna kinda have to push it in to lock it the rest of the way. That is not the only way to do that, as I'm going to show you when we get around to the back seat. Now, you can also collapse it down. Now it sort of locks into place. As you can see, you do have uh, these levers right here, so you can use those to collapse this seat as well. And I'm gonna come over to the other side to show you just how much the seats really recline here. It's pretty great. So right now you see these seats are in their sort of most upright position, whereas this one is very leaned back. So you can get into quite a comfortable position here in the Tucson, I really like that. Here's our first look at the perforated leather that you get on the limited trim. 
terms of armrest, pretty basic, just cup holders right here. But on the limited term, we do have some niceties. We've got heated seats here on the rear doors. So that's what these buttons do. We have our power windows, obviously. Very nice uh, materials here on the door card, very soft touch here. We've got sort of this nice cloth here and then a little bit of uh, plas plastic here leading into a somewhat softer touch material here. Here in the back seat, we've got these cargo nets as well. Uh, so you can put your stuff, this holds objects quite well. We also have our own air vents and two USB ports back here. You'll also enjoy a large panoramic roof. See how big this is, it stretches all the way back about behind the rear passenger's head. So this does really make the Tucson feel like you have a ton of space back here. And in terms of legroom, I have plenty of it. This is one of the larger compact crossovers that you're going to be able to get. You can't slide uh, the base of these seats, but as I showed you with the recline, very easy to get comfortable back here. Now we're gonna get on to the main event, which is the front seat. There is a lot to like here on the Tucson. One thing I don't like, and I will say, is that the door handle sounds a bit tinny. Yeah, I, I don't love how that sounds. It sounds just a little bit cheap, but that's just a minor complaint here. We do have our memory seats here for the driver's seat. They are power. You have full power adjustment here for uh, aft and then you have your lumbar adjustment here. The seats themselves I think look very premium. This metal piece right here is really just decorative but I think it makes it look a lot like a Genesis G70 seat. So now we're going to go ahead and step on inside where this cabin is very very cool. The steering wheel highly unique. We've got these sort of silver trims here um, around the side. Very nice leather material here as well. Push to start because we have a limited trim obviously there we go everything is fired up i'm going to go ahead and start up this main screen so i guess first we'll talk about what's here on the steering wheel we have our voice command button we have our mode button for the radio functions we have a favorite button here volume control all of that here's where you can change the information that is on this gauge cluster here so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that because it is very cool um, so you can have your information your trip information, your energy flow, speed, what have you. You can have your GPS destinations as well. That's another energy flow chart. You can have your tire pressures, engine temperature, and, and then you can have your sort of safety functions here as well. Now the gauges, they look like this as standard. We're in the default eco mode. You also have a drive mode rocker switch here that you can use. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to put it into sport mode. You can see that this gauge right here changes from like a charge eco power gauge to a conventional tachometer and the theme changes quite a bit as well. Then you have Smart, which is just a little bit different than Eco, and it shares the same graphics uh, with the Snow Mode, so there's not too much of a difference there, but as you can see, those are different from each other, the Eco and Snow and Smart Modes. Down at the bottom, you've got your fuel economy readout. You can see I've been averaging a little over 37 miles per gallon. This thing gets great gas mileage, um, so if that's what you really want, you should be looking at the Tucson Hybrid over the gas engine car, uh, which is less powerful and gets about eight or nine MPG less. Now over here, we have some additional controls, traction control off, 12 volt battery reset. I'm not really sure why that you need a separate button for that. This will open up your trunk and then this is the uh, dim uh, brighten switch for all of your gauge functions. Since we have the most fully loaded version of the Tucson, we've got the larger 10.25 inch display. I think it's very good. The graphics are not my favorite. I think these icons kind of remind me of like Windows XP. Um, so they're not my favorite, but the screen itself is really good. We have really nice map quality and everything like that on here. If I go into my radio mode, you'll hear, let's see, let's mute it. You'll notice something that I hate about it, which is it doesn't have a volume knob. You have to like tap these touch buttons or you can obviously use the control on the steering wheel and it's not very precise. Wish Hyundai would have just given us a knob here. What I do like about this screen though is we can be on our radio and then we can pull up our split screen menu and now you can see we can have our map, we can have uh, different functions, our weather, our calendar, our compass, the time, fuel economy, whatever. And then as soon as you want to get rid of that, you can just push it away very easily. That is some really great um, 
interface, user interface right there. We do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Uh, I can't show you that because I'm using my phone to film. And uh, it's worth noting that this 10.25 inch screen, you have to plug in your phone to get CarPlay. If you get the smaller screen, you do get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. I'm not sure why Hyundai uh, still does that. It's a little bit weird. Down here, we have our climate controls, dual zone automatic on this. We also have an air diffuse uh, feature, which I really like. You don't get that on inexpensive cars like this usually at this price range. So instead of the air like directly blowing on you, it kind of diffuses it so it doesn't feel like it's really just blowing on your face. That is quite a nice touch as well. Just like the volume controls, these are touch capacitive. Not my favorite, I would have preferred physical buttons, but it gets the job done. Down here, we have our USB, as I showed you. We also have a 12 volt outlet and another USB plug. This is also a wireless charger here on this top trim. Very deep, great for your sunglasses and your phone. You can put your sunglasses here, still charge your phone. So I like the integration of that. We do have heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel on this limited model. This is our hill descent control, which you would use off-road. You're probably not gonna do that. We have our parking sensor button and our parking camera button. So if I go ahead and pull that up, you're gonna see the parking uh, display here. Uh, so really clear high resolution here. We do have marker lines as well that move. This is a fantastic 360 degree camera. It works really well. We also have a mode where you can lock it into all wheel drive. This is a mechanical all wheel drive system, but it mostly defaults to front wheel drive. Uh, if you're you know trying to save fuel economy, but if you want, you're in the snowstorm, etc., you can lock it into its all wheel drive mode. Over here, we have our drive mode buttons, park, reverse, neutral, and drive. It's not my favorite of these sort of push button selectors because I've often been in drive and wanting to go to park and I'll hit reverse because I kind of just want them to all be in a line, not remembering that park is actually over here to the left. Something you'll probably get used to if you own the car for a little bit longer. I've only been driving it for a week, so it's a little bit hard for me to say. We have our two cup holders next to it, which um, offer plenty of space. I have no, no complaints about the cup holders here, although the ones in the door are a little bit small. You can also see in the door our ambient lighting, which you can play around a lot of different colors with, which is quite nice. There's also a little bit of extra storage here on the side of the console, and you get more of that over here as well with a plenty deep uh, armrest here as well. So there is plenty of storage on this car as well. Some other things that I wanted to show you here on this main screen, we do have a valet mode. We have a quiet mode that'll dim the rear speakers if you just don't want to disturb the kids, which is quite nice. We have this feature called Sounds of Nature, with which a lot of Hyundai and Kia products have now, where you can listen to these sort of relaxing noises. So you have calm sea waves, rainy day, which sounds like raindrops, open air cafe, Sounds like you're in like a cafe in France. Warm fireplace, probably my favorite one. It sounds like a crackling fire or snowy village, which you get like the crunch, crunch sounds, uh, which is kind of interesting as well. And I forgot to note, we do have our auto hold feature as well. So you push this button and you can take your foot off of the brake and you will just stay there in traffic without having to hold on the brake the whole time. Um, so that's pretty much everything that I would need to go over here on the inside. We'll touch on the engine briefly as well. Let's go ahead and turn the lights on so I can show you those as well as we get out. So as you can see, we've got our DRLs here. We've got our secondary headlight right here. Under the hood, ugh, we've got our hybrid engine. So it's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine mated to a hybrid system. Um, so you're really opting for this if you want to get better fuel economy. You get a two and a half liter engine if you get the gas powered Tucson, but I think I actually prefer this Tucson model with the hybrid, it's not that much more expensive than the regular Tucson and the fuel economy savings will add up in about three years. So if you plan to own the vehicle for longer than that, I think you are good. And the last thing I wanna show you as we wrap up the video is some of the features that you get here on the key fob with the Tucson. Uh, this is the most fully loaded model, so you have to step up to the limited trim to get all of these features here. So we do have remote start, so you go ahead and lock the vehicle, hold this button right here, and it will remote start. 
That's pretty standard. You'll find that on a lot of vehicles, but we also have Hyundai's remote smart park assist, which are these two buttons right here. So say somebody's parked a little too close to you in the parking spot, you just hold this button and you can actually use the key fob to direct the car forwards and backwards. So there we see it's crawling forward. You can see there's obviously nobody in the driver's seat right now. It'll keep going until it's about to hit something or it just senses that you're a little too far from the key fob. You can also make it go backwards as well. I could see this being useful if you're not super confident pulling in and out of your own garage or like I said, if somebody parks a little bit too close to you, you could use it for that as well. It's a little bit gimmicky since it doesn't really do a whole bunch of steering for you, but it is a nice feature that is pretty cool to show your friends. You can hear that while it's running right now, um, the engine is not on because it's just driving at slow speed, so it's using the electric motor. You can hear that humming noise. That's for uh, pedestrian safety. They have to be able to hear this coming even though it's pretty silent. So that was our deep dive. Everything you need to know about the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. Again, we have our full review of the Tucson going up on our channel. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos and stay tuned for our full review of the 2022 Tucson. I'll see you next time.